What is up everybody, Dak here and episode 6 I believe. Uh, so as you can see the glue is set and now I'm gluing it to the bottom sheet right here. Uh, the way I'm doing it is I'm using two of the ramps from the template. Uh, I've screwed them in as you can see right there. Uh, so this sheet's screwed in in two spots and all I've done is uh, the way this formed was it wanted to spread out right at the end so I've got the end pieces just sitting up against it with pressure outward and then in the middle and just near the front I have these two pieces which are hopefully prying it apart so it should meet up at the points there and that part just there uh, the part at the front isn't super necessary so I'm just going to ignore it as it's already following the progression for the most part uh, hopefully once this glue dries uh, these two pieces will actually completely hold their shape instead of just mimicking the shape they were supposed to be doing yeah, as you can see just here I've also rounded over the edge uh, I used the round over bit on the router just went down one side then down the other side then I got the belt sander just to finish it off so they should be right to have those uh, two halves just there uh, placed behind them. The glue has now had plenty of time to dry so now it's the moment of truth. I'm going to pop out the two wedges in here and see if it holds its shape. I can see that these will easily be held in at the back because you can see the foam. I'm not so sure about this side, uh, not sure if you can see but there is a bit of a gap all along there. Although it seems to touch at the front so yeah hopefully that's not a problem but we're about to find out if it is I should just be able to apply more glue. Okay that seems to have held its shape. Okay well that's glued in. So, or is it? No it's not glued in. It's... <laughs> but yeah that seems to have also held its shape. Um, as you can see right there it does follow there's not much of a gap at all and same on this side for the most part. Uh, there is a slight gap up there. It's hard to tell how wide it is on video but it's only about a millimeter gap. Alright I'm back and as you can see uh, the wedge is now glued in place. It's now starting to get quite big so I'm finding it hard to fit it all within frame. <laughs> But yeah, you can see that indeed it is quite big. So yeah, it's successfully glued in place. It's held its shape and everything. So I'm now going to put the sides and the back on. The next step after that will be to install that cylinder right over there into about halfway along the top. So I'm also going to have to prepare that by putting a plug on the bottom of it and putting a ring on the top for the speaker to mount into. I'll also have to jigsaw down the sides in order to fit the tube in, which will be difficult with the sides on, but I should be able to manage it. Another problem I could have when jigsawing is it could warp it slightly, so if the sides are on, I can use them to help brace it. So that's another benefit from putting the sides on. Plus, I'll get a bit more done on the project, so it'll feel like I'm actually progressing instead of just doing one small step at a time. Now the sides will definitely be one of the biggest uh, steps forward adding them to. This one here is probably the biggest step uh, full stop. I don't think anything inside will be as major as this apart from mounting the sub itself, uh, putting the, the panel on the top and firing it up for the first time. All the sides are now glued on as you can possibly see down there. So now the next part I'm going to do is I am going to make up the plugs for the top and bottom. Uh, top one's just going to be a ring that the speaker mounts into and the bottom one will completely seal off the pipe. So what I've just done is I've marked out where the pipe is going to go in the box and since not everything's perfectly parallel I decided to put two of the exponential curves in the top and clamp them in place in order to get the correct width for where the pipe's going to go. So yeah you can see right there I'm going to probably use the jigsaw at a 45 in order to cut down I'd like to keep that kind of angle in there where the pipe gets cut out just to keep it, keep as much wood there as possible and keep it as strong as possible. Yeah, you can see right there that's where the pipe's going within the box. It's about a foot away from the front 
and roughly the same way from the back. There you can see they're about 32 centimeters. While the pipe's gluing, I could potentially get the jigsaw out and do that. I'm not sure if I'll do it yet or not, as it could be quite difficult. I've also got to mark down 37 centimeters roughly in order to have the pipe at the right depth. So I also want to take out the least amount of wood possible, which means uh, just below where the pipe is going to go, I want to keep the bottom part of the curve intact. Yeah, you can see right there that this pipe is roughly 30 centimeters long. So from the bottom of where it mounts to the top, I need seven centimeters above in order to have a five liter compression chamber. And then of course the top of the box is going right there. Although I'll have this panel right in the middle removable. So you can access the sub for maintenance or swapping it out. All right, so in order to get the right size for this, I'm just going to sit it on a bit of plywood, just that bit right there, uh, and then just run a ring around the middle and then jigsaw it out. I'll try to get it as close as possible, uh, running straight along the line, although that glue should foam up and fill in any gaps. Bottoms in and the second rings in, and they're both glued in. So this is now the uh, sealed chamber in the enclosure done. And now the next thing I've got to do is get the jigsaw, set it to probably about a 45 and tackle those cuts right there. As you can see that line is where I've got to follow the jigsaw down right there. I've got to extend it down 37 centimeters right now. I think it's only about 20 in order to have enough clearance for the tube to fit right in that gap there. Uh, once it is in though, uh, depending on how close I get it, it should wedge these two sides apart, which means that I can continue um, building into it without having to use this setup here in order to keep it at the right spacing. I did go into the simulation software just to see what would happen if I put the top on with some sealing tape and put that tube in there with the driver in it just to see how it would perform without any of the pipes inside. And it looks like it would tune very sharply to 50 hertz. It would have a huge spike at 50 hertz, where it would be quite efficient, but that's all it'd do, 50 hertz. Uh, 40 hertz was minus 15 dB, and 60 hertz was also about minus 10 dB. So yeah, that's that's not good at all. I've had a bit more looking for a driver. Uh, I'm very tempted to go with a Sundown NSV4 with the black spider pack. Uh, from what I can see in the software, it's quite good. Also, they're quite good subs and the magnets are rated for high temperature, which is going to be very important because it's going to get awfully hot in this tube with a high powered sub with no venting. Doesn't matter how much venting the voice calls got because the air's being trapped in here. That's one of the reason I'm a fan of invert mounting subs in fourth order band passes so the motors get a lot more cooling. You know, something I just noticed about this uh, tube here is if you made this an enclosure, it's super light. Like it wouldn't weigh more than about five kilos. And for anyone who's into performance cars and weight reduction, the things like that, and don't want to give up their base, then this is possibly a good way of getting around it. Five kilo, one of these. Just get either a neodymium sub with a really lightweight magnet or a sub just like that, which wouldn't weigh more than a few kilos also. And you know, modern class D amps are so compact and light that, you know, you could have pretty good sound for only 10 kilos. Some sanding and some jigsawing later, and I've now taken the notches out. So you can see the tube outfits in there right now. I've still got some more filing to do on it yet, but I'm going to have to call it for the day. I'm pretty tired after doing that. Uh, it involved doing some upside down jigsawing which is never fun. But yeah, as you can see, the tube's in there. It'll need to be glued and epoxied into place and such. But yeah, it's coming along. The next part to do will be get some foam and some fiberglass in order to form the, the throat of the box that curves down there and also do something about the curve that comes up the middle and the two curves that go around the sides. So I, I do have those two bits right there that are gonna go in that corner and that corner. This will also really help to brace the box. Due to some spring loading, it's a bit narrower at the top. So just wedging it out should make it a bit easier to do certain things like install those into the back to be at the right distances. Although I won't be gluing it in yet as I've still got to do the stuff underneath it. And if I were to uh, put in there permanently now, it'd be really hard to get to. Uh, something else I wanted to do with the box is put a clear coat of fiberglass resin on this inner bit of wood here. Obviously that wouldn't look very nice over 
those stains there. So I'm probably going to either paint or add white fiberglass resin to it with a pigment added to it in order to make it look uh, bright and clean. Also too, I'll need to drill the holes into this and I'll need to do some forming around the top in order to make the chamber above the speaker airtight. It'll have a removable panel though so I can access the driver, swap it out if I need to. So that's something else I've got to take into account. But yeah, I've only got one more week to work on it properly so hopefully I get a bit more done. Just looking at it right now, if I can fill it all with fiberglass, so if I can fill it all with expanding foam and start carving away and then add the fiberglass to it, it could actually not take too much longer to get it done. I think I've only got a few more bits of wood I need to cut uh, for underneath there and also uh, the two bits that go along there and along there that go inward to these two curves. Yeah, if you enjoyed and want to see me finish it and test it then uh, subscribe. Also hit the like button to let me know uh, if you're enjoying the videos and also of course leave suggestions. I haven't found any royalty free music yet but I'll find something. Thanks for watching.